Hi, everybody. Um, so this is a story about getting around Bonnaroo. Um, more specifically, it's a story about getting around Bonnaroo in a worst case scenario. Um, how many people have been to Bonnaroo? Anybody? A few? Oh, I'm disappointed. It is Nashville. Um, okay, so for those of you guys who don't know, Bonnaroo is a music festival in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee. Um, it's three and a half days. It lasts Thursday night, all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Um, it's more or less a hippie utopia. There's about 90,000 people there, some of whom may or may not be clothed. Um, from what I can tell, there are no laws at Bonnaroo, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. Drink whatever you want, consume whatever you want, um, etc. And I've been to Bonnaroo twice. I went uh, once in 2006 and once in 2010. They were both very memorable experiences, but by far the most memorable, most memorable experience was in uh, 2010, uh, because I did experience this worst case scenario. So it's sort of hard to forget. Um, but there is a lot of good about Bonnaroo as well. I uh, went with my friend Catelyn, who is actually my oldest friend. She and I have known each other since about fifth grade. So Bonnaroo is, is a misadventure in and of itself, but to experience this with my oldest friend was a, a privilege, to say the least. Um, so uh, this particular story takes place on Saturday of Bonnaroo. Um, by this point, I am exhausted. Um, we got to Bonnaroo probably early Thursday afternoon. Um, you know, watched music, partied all day Thursday, watched music, partied all day Friday. It's also like 110 degree weather. I mean, you are exhausted by Saturday. Um, this was also the year that Conan O'Brien was at Bonnaroo. Uh, this was right around the time where he had just been fired from The Tonight Show and he was going on all these tours across the country and he couldn't give any interviews, he couldn't be on TV. Um, and for whatever reason, Conan was not on the main stage of Bonnaroo. He's, um, he was at this little tiny tent and you had to get special tickets to go see him. Um, so uh, after staying up way, way too late Friday, I got up at like 8 in the morning on Saturday to go get my friend Cal and I tickets for Conan O'Brien. And as soon as we saw Conan, um, I fell asleep like under a tree somewhere. <laughs> um, and then later that night, we saw Stevie Wonder and Jay-Z back to back, who were incredible. Um, uh, not a huge Stevie Wonder fan, probably like Jay-Z a little bit more, but both were incredible. Uh, totally energetic, totally vivacious, just brought the house down. Um, and by the time that Jay-Z ended his set, it was probably like one or two in the morning. It's now Sunday morning. And this is where the story takes a sharp left turn. Um, because as we're leaving the Jay-Z concert, for whatever reason, all, you know, tens, tens of thousands of people can only leave outside this one gate. There's literally like hundreds of gates that you can get out of. They have locked all of them and have only one gate for tens of thousands of people to get out of. It's like riot, you know, <laughs> material right there. So we're just waiting patiently trying to get back to our camps, which because there's so many people at Bonnaroo, your camp is literally like you know, two miles from, from where you see the music. So not only are you seeing this music and you're partying, but you have to walk, you know, like 30 minutes, an hour back and forth just to, to go eat lunch or go take a nap. So as we're standing here waiting at the gate, I look up and I see a UFO. I swear to God, I see a UFO. Now granted, I was not in the most sober state of mind, so I had to ask myself, is that really a UFO? Um, but other people around me started to notice, like, bro, bro, that's a UFO, bro. And my friend Callan and I have since talked about this, and she definitely saw what I saw. But at first I thought it was a helicopter, because uh, we'd seen lots of helicopters throughout the day, and it was hovering very, very low over top of us. And there were these blinking lights, and sort of like, that's just like a helicopter, news helicopter, whatever. And then it just took off. Like, in an instant, we're like, that is no fucking helicopter, that is a UFO. So, as we're walk we finally get out of, like, the main area of Bonnaroo, and we're walking back to our tent, and we're just, like, totally amped up. We're like, we saw Conan O'Brien today, we saw Stevie Wonder, we saw Jay-Z, we saw a UFO, like, we are awesome. Um, but we are exhausted also, so I get back to the tent, and uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm wiped out by this point. And Catelyn is like, I'm gonna go to the porta potty use the bathroom, change into my pajamas, and then I'll be back. The next thing I know, I, I cannot tell you how much later this is, could be half an hour, could be ten minutes, could be two hours, I really don't know, but I start hearing this voice. 
And it goes something like this. Hey, I'm looking for a dude with glasses. <laughs> hey, dude with glasses, you need to wake up. There is some trouble going on. And I keep hearing this like weird, like drugged out hippie voice. And finally, finally, this, this person is like, I think your name is Adam. And finally I like wake up and I unzip the tent and there's like this little short, like dreadlocked, stoned out of her mind hippie. Probably, I don't know, she's probably in her, her late teens, I would say. And she's like, dude, your friend is seriously injured. You've got to come help her. Um, this is also the, also the time I should preface that at some point during that Saturday, I let myself get covered in body glitter. Like head <laughs> to toe, like I had just been to a pride parade or something, like covered in body glitter. So when I wake up, I am wearing nothing but like short gym shorts, a bandana, and body glitter. And I go, <laughs> I go into like super mom mode. I'm like, what is wrong? Like I've got to help my friend. So what had happened is, uh, is a week before Bonnaroo had started, there were these terrible, terrible, terrible thunderstorms all throughout Tennessee. So all of Bonnaroo was just this giant mud pit the entire time we were here. So Catelyn had made it to the porta potty. She had done her business. She had gotten out of her pajamas. And on the way back to the tent, which was literally like a minute from the porta potty, she slipped in the mud and twisted her knee. So, um, and this, this stoned like hippie who was coming to help me get Catelyn uh, was a taxi driver. So her job was to drive a golf cart around Bonnaroo, taking people from the festival back to their tents. And she had just happened to have dropped somebody off and come upon Catelyn like sobbing there in the mud and came and got me. So it was totally lucky. It could have been so much worse. But... Um, so I come upon Catelyn, she's like holding her knee, she's sobbing, she's got like her dirty bra and panties like, you know, crunched up, and she's like, I hurt my knee! And I'm like, can you walk on your knee at all? She says, no, I cannot put any pressure on it, I cannot move. I'm like, okay. So basically what we have to do is we have to take Catelyn to the medical tent. Um, because Bonnaroo's so spread out, remember there's about 90,000 people there, um, I think Asheville is like 60,000 like in our opinion. So, I mean, it's literally like bigger than Asheville. Um, so, uh, they have these balloons um, all over Bonnaroo. And basically what those balloons signify are important places to go. And they are literally like 500 feet up in the air. They're ginormous. And the first aid kits have bucking red cross symbols on them. They are not hard to miss at all. So, we think this is going to be easy, getting Catelyn to a first aid tent in a golf cart. Not at all. Um, remember I told you this girl was a taxi driver? She um, kept picking people up while she was taking us to the first aid kit. So here was, again, Catelyn sobbing, holding her knee. And we're just picking up, like, passers-by, taking them into the camp. I'm like, hey, can you hurry this up? Like, my friend is in pain. She's like, oh, bro, it's cool, it's cool, we'll get there soon. Um, we don't get there soon. She literally dead ends us into an encampment of tents, like a wall of tents. And we have to do like a 30 point turn out of this tent. The, the, and this is probably like three in the morning by this point. The golf cart beeps like bang, bang, bang. She's like running into people who are asleep in the tents. Like people are yelling and screaming like, ah! Like, what, like what is running over me? And so not only am I trying to help my friend who's in pain, I'm also like deeply, deeply embarrassed by this point. Um, so eventually we get Catelyn to a medical tent, and this has been like an hour by this point. I mean, I probably could have walked her there um, in a shorter amount of time. Um, so we get into the tent, and the only people there are this ginormous man um, and two EMTs, and this ginormous man is just like huffing like holding his chest, like, oh, oh, I'm having a heart attack. Oh, oh. And this goes on for about an hour. Like literally this guy's huffing, like, and the EMTs are, again, from the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, they have, are totally out of their element. You can tell they've never dealt with anything like this before in their life. 
Um, and this guy's just huffing, 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 and they're going through the routine questions like, have you done any drugs? Have you drank anything today? Did you drink lots of water? Do you feel dehydrated? Did you sleep last night? You know, all these common sense questions. And I'm sitting there, Catelyn's still just holding her knee, sobbing. She's very, very concerned about whether or not she's going to get to see John Fogarty the next day, who's the, the lead singer of Creedence Clearwater uh, Revival. So she's, she's like, this might be my last chance to see him. Like, she just cried. She's like, i got to see John Fogarty. She's like, why can't they just get this dude out of here? And it's so apparent that he just needs like a fucking Pepsid AC to deal with his indigestion, and he needs to get out of the tent. Um, but they don't do that. They just cater to his needs for about an hour. Um, so finally, they get over to Catelyn and I, um, and there's basically nothing they can do to help her. They say, you have to go to the main medical tent. I did not even know such a thing existed at Bonnaroo. Um, so when I hear that, I'm like, oh shit, like this is about to go down. Like it's four in the morning, I'm covered in body glitter, like Catelyn might have to go to the hospital, she might need surgery, neither of us have our cell phones on each other, like total disaster, total disaster. So I just try to keep it together for Catelyn, and I'm also holding on to her like muddy panties and bra, so like, like it's the last thing on earth I will do, you know. Um, so they're like, you know, we're going to take you to the main medical tent, but uh, we need to wait on a golf cart to take you there. Um, has anybody ever heard of the band Guar? Yes. Uh, so if you don't know what Guar is, they are sort of a, a tongue-in-cheek metal band that um, spews like fake blood and fake semen on their audience members, and their audience members go crazy and like beat the shit out of each other. Um, so the reason that we couldn't get a golf cart is because the Guar show had just ended, um, and they were like, "We gotta get all our people to that Guar show, man! Like people have fucked up." And so like, they're all the golf carts were at this Guar show, and so again, we had to wait like another. You know, I'm sort of in a time warp by this point, but we had to wait another, you know, 30 minutes, hour to get this golf cart. I mean, by this time, this affair has been at least three hours. Um, and so finally we get a golf cart. It's enough, it's a huge golf cart. It's enough for like eight people. It's like a golf cart limo, basically. And they will not let me go with Kathleen. They say, there are too many people who are fucked up tonight. You cannot go on the cart. And the main medical tent is literally like at the, the opposite ass end of where we are at. Like it is the furthest place you can go at Bonnaroo. And I was like, I had to sweet talk the dude. I was like, dude, listen, this is one of my best friends. We are here together. She may not be able to walk. She might have to go to the hospital. She might have to have surgery. And you're telling me I cannot go be with her to support her. I was like, that's bullshit. I'm going to stay on this golf cart and you're going to take me with her. And he still wouldn't do it. And finally, I decided to stand my ground. And this sweet old lady was like, come on, like, let him go with his friend. And so finally, we, we go on this like 20 minute golf cart ride to the main medical tent, which is terrifying. Terrifying. We get there, and Catelyn immediately just starts weeping. I mean, she's been upset this time, but it, it goes to a whole other level. Because when we walk into this main medical tent, it is like Linda Blair exorcism bullshit. Like, people strapped to cots, like, retching, like, because they're on terrible drugs of some kind. Literally just like... I kid you not, there are little girls on their smartphones, hooked up to IVs, obviously like tripping balls, like ah! it was it was like the the most uncomfortable situation of my life. It just it, it was everything bad about humanity in that one moment. Um, and Callan just weeping, she's like, I'm never gonna see John Fogarty before he dies. Just like breaking down. So we have to wait on this cot for another, you know, 30 minutes, an hour while they're making the rounds. And finally they, they come up to Catelyn and um, they give her an ice pack and they're like, you know, we, we don't think that this is quite as serious as we initially expected. And uh, I think in a few days or a few weeks, you're probably going to be able to walk on this. But for right now, you just need to, to stay off of it. And Catelyn's like, okay, that's great. Do you have any crushes for me? And the, the woman literally looks at and I and said, oh, we ran out yesterday, but there is a Walmart 45 minutes away. You're welcome to go there. I remember we're in the middle of 90,000 people and we're all camping out and all of our cars are surrounded by all our tents. There's no way that we can get to Walmart that's 45 minutes away. That'll take like four hours. 
Um, so, uh, what I have to do is I just have to hobble Catelyn back to the tent, and in the morning I have to hobble her to go see John Fogarty, and she cries when she sees him, she's so happy, and then I have to hobble her back to the car, and we got the fuck out of Bonnaroo. And that was the last time I went, so thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs>